Hello and welcome back. This is a very special interview for me with Nora Bateson. And um, I'll set some context for that in a moment after some housekeeping. So a few things. So as I've mentioned before, the Circling Institute, my company, um, we've moved all of our courses for now online and that's working out really well. In fact, it's working out so well that we've decided to um, create and put on the main course that we do, which is called The Art of Circling, which is a training in becoming a practitioner, a uh, full practitioner in learning how to facilitate and lead circles. And in my experience, what it takes to learn to lead circles is also what it takes to be deeply human. And what it takes to be deeply human, as far as I can tell, is getting as intimately in relationship with the ontological mystery at the center of everything. So it's a course in that. <laughs> That's quite a good description, I guess. Um, so we're going to be doing one online. Uh, we've just decided that. So uh, uh, go ahead and, and click the link if you're interested in that. Uh, uh, email us at the Circling Institute. The, the web, website's below. Also, I do individual coaching, one-on-one. -on -one. If you're interested in that, email me, um, and we can talk about what that entails and how much it costs and all that stuff. So, okay. So this conversation, this one's a really special one for me because um, it's linked to somebody, somebody's work, Nora, Nora Bateson's father. Um, Gregory Bateson, who's been deeply, deeply influential, influential for me in my own, my own work and circling and training and, and thinking um, at a very deep level for a long time. And I first got in contact with Nora's work through a, uh, a biographical um, movie that she made of her father, which I thought was really good. Um, and she's since written books and she's continued her own work in her own way in a beautiful way and as i i would say is a furthering um and an, an exemplification of what her father really her father and his father really uh courageously exemplified themselves and nora is a unique human deeply um well, you'll see. So I want to just encourage you to, uh, like I did, and just enjoy, enjoy the conversation. I think what she has to say is, uh, is unique and paradoxical in the sense that, because it really, to me, like I think what Nora is getting at is, is she's, she's saying, you know, she's basically saying to really, 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 really understand is to is to be in relationship with how deeply being human is contextual being in a world is about context layers and nested layers of context and and to and to know that to get to know that is to learn how to see and to learn how to see is to realize that there's so much that we don't see and that humility can evoke a response that's one of deep respect and integrity. And uh, to me, Nora really exemplifies that and evokes that in just listening to her. Um, so I, I really, really enjoyed her and, and, and um, look forward to having more conversations with her. So uh, with great honor and respect and delight, here's our conversation with Nora Bateson. Thank you. There we are. We are officially recording. Welcome, Nora. Hi. Hi, it's great to be here. It's good to see you. It's really good to see you. I mean, one of the things I've I've appreciated, you know, since I've been um, a face on the internet and and listening to all these different conversations that are happening is, um, you when you when I've seen you. You strike you strike a chord of humanity. There's a humanness about you, and a warmth uh, 
that I really, really appreciate. And I think one of the things we were joking about, right, when we were messaging originally, right, is I think we share a similar um, pet peeve <laughs> about, about the sense of, I heard you talk about this in, in one of your interviews, about this sense of how, how like what our perspective is so small, right? We're like a, a little insect on a, on a huge tree trying to make our way through it. And it seems to me that your response to that is not one of, um, what, what would you say? Trying to figure out what the problem is and solving it, but your response seems to be more heartfelt and poetic, which I've really appreciated a lot. That's good to hear because I think a lot of people don't understand it hmm. or that it's perceived as being not um, practical mm -hmm. or that it doesn't lead to action. Yeah. Um, and I don't agree with that at all. I can't actually think of anything that, uh, that has more action in it. Mm. Right, because it's it's not it's not just that there's action, it's the the perception and the tonality, the the the, the sensibility, the the basis of of what's behind the action. Yeah. Right? That yeah. that guides and changes everything, even the most practical little things you know you can like okay you know like i've never done this but um i have had friends who've studied the art of tea mm -hmm. and the the you could just like throw a tea bag in a cup and you could pour hot water in it and you could have tea mm -hmm. and it would be for all in, intents and purposes it's a cup of tea yeah Right, yeah. but then there's another way of making a cup of tea that has all kinds of other carefulnesses in it, attendings, oh. um, aesthetics, oh. um, carings, oh. and and mostly it's attention yeah. to all those processes, and yeah. it's a, it's still a cup of tea. Yeah. But it's not a cup. It's not the same. It's yeah. just not the same thing. So yeah. it's, this is where I find that I have a big um, a big piece of work to do around how to communicate that so that it isn't um, so wildly out of sync with uh, people who actually do care and are paying attention. Mm -hmm. and are positioned into very linear strategic courses of action right. that are are fueled by urgency and all that urgency is real and all those actions are real and yet there's something about the way that those actions are are taking place that has a whole field of meta messaging in it mm -hmm. um that say that a lot of other stuff doesn't matter. Yeah. Culture doesn't matter. Families don't matter. Things that, things that could, that context doesn't matter is right. the big one. Yeah, yeah. And, and that contexts, right, more than one don't mm -hmm. matter because what we have to do is this piece of work right here and we have to do it today. We've got to get organized. We've got to get it happening. And there is something desperately, vitally, critically important about what, what's underneath that action besides just passion, which can be blind to so many other positionings and points of view. And it's not that I'm advocating this sort of endless 
navel gazing what about the context of the next larger universe thing it's really um it's really that just deep attention Mm -hmm. that can reach Mm -hmm. around and below and and beyond and looking at lots of things simultaneously and holding that and responding yeah totally well as you described it as you described it yeah it's attending right it's when and what basically what I'm hearing is caring, right? To the the layers, the 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 complex layers of relation that's nestled in and code nest and everything. And it I was noticing you were moving your hands at the same time. And I think that's the 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 sense I get when you're talking about action, right? Is I don't get it, I don't get a sense. I don't get a sense of a bunch of points that you connect. I get a a different sense of a a bunch, a a network of relations, a unfolding of relations and that, and that you're moving your hands in order to do that. You are in fact acting, (laughs) right? You are taking action, right? Right. Yeah. So (laughs) I guess, especially in these moments of, this pandemic and the pandemic response and Mm. uh, looking for causation, imagining futures, uh, trying to develop new treatments, uh, trying to analyze this isolation process. Mm -hmm. Uh, there's, There's a real, I think, call to deepen all of those processes yeah and um you know it's not just about oh you know i'm at home making new things or you know this person is to blame or this part of the system is to blame or uh, we have to envision and project some new vision onto the future um you know all of those processes are are not really in the dirt it's like those are sort of if you're thinking about vegetables those would be vegetables at the supermarket on display right but they're not the soil that actually produces the life and the nourishment that comes out of those vegetables and and so i i guess that's the piece for me where i i am okay with um a little bit slower thinking, a little bit slower sensing mm-hmm. uh, into into what? Well, into something that spans from something that's very intimate, yeah, into a, a much more yeah. wider and even global uh, set of contexts. But I don't want to get all excited about the global and forget about the the mm-hmm. the details of intimate experience. And I don't want to get myopic in the intimate experience and forget about the global consequences. Yeah. Um, either one of those becomes some kind of uh, uh, strange blind spot or a reductionism whatever you want to call it but it's um i was joking with a friend of mine the other day and and we saw this ad of well but will the pandemic be this new way of raising consciousness Mm -hmm. and i i you know just found myself saying i think we'll probably be raising consciousness right about the time we stop trying to raise consciousness (laughs) Right about the time we stop talking about it, it'll be happening. And it's just, it's that thing of, you know, this is not about solving a problem. It's about who, Mm -hmm. who you are and how you respond to every aspect of your life. As I'm listening to you, it's interesting. I'm feeling more relaxed Because I think I'm following, kind of to follow, I was noticing that as my listening was kind of following 
your sensibility, there is a sense in which I feel as I look out, I drop back, right? There's this co, and I think it's, I hear that, in, but I actually have to do it in order to understand you, the sense of what's happening, this, these, both these movements going on and more of a sense of a, like a resting back into the background. You said context. Mm. Um, I know that work with working with people for me uh, and with groups and, you know, to get, a, get to get to know a person, it's so interesting. It's like, don't really see somebody. It, it, there's, it is not to see them as a content, <laughs> right? An object, right? Or something. It's to really get somebody's to get the layers of history that inform how whatever it is that they're paying attention to, including the way that they're responding is responding to you in that moment is so wedded with so much intelligibility, right? That that person can't even know it in any explicit way. And I, 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 I sense that, right? As you're talking about like our times and what we're talking about in a certain sense is that there is this, and, to, and, to, and I've noticed to be intimate with somebody, to really be intimate is a kind of a sinking, like a sinking in, like a broadening of my vision, right? An, open, an openness to be affected and to be impacted. Mm. Um, but just love layers and layers of context. And I think this is one of the things about your work. And, is, and like I was talking about before we started recording, you know, my my introduction to you is, was through your dad, Gregory Bateson. Um, and I've been fast, I, I, I'm like fast, I've just been always like fascinated with his thinking, right? Mm -hmm. Every, in, in, in the, the beyond, like he is like so beyond any category. <laughs> you know, I, right? I, I agree completely. And, yeah. um, I just love his work. Yeah. And you, you know what a relief that is? <laughs> it's like, <sighs> whew, yes. because there was no way out, right? So, yeah. But I just, uh, you know, and especially as time goes on, I, uh -huh. I am so appreciative of uh -huh. the incredible bravery. Uh -huh. And, he, you know, he yeah. got a lot of it from his dad. Let's see more. Uh, so they uh, they both were willing to basically stand in the storm um, to keep the door open for the interdependencies of life to not be defined or measured or reduced or overlooked or limited or um, concluded. Yeah, and. Uh, I mean, that's not easy, right? It's not easy. It's, it's 100 years ago, more than 100 years ago, 135, 40 years ago since William Bateson was doing this. Yeah. And all of the, all of the momentums mm. of the culture of the sort of Western world that's premised on economies and so on and so forth, hierarchies and governance and democracies. And mm -hmm. um, all of those momentums drive a different kind of r r rationale and logic toward mm -hmm. a different kind of practicality. Mm -hmm. And if there's one thing that I can say that in this moment is very, very clear is that those rationales and those logics were actually propelling um, societies and, and cultures into a very vulnerable, destructive, exploitative, extractive mess. Mm -hmm. um, that was always true. It's mm -hmm. been true. I mean, William was talking about it before the turn of the century. Mm. 
right? And then Gregory came along and he explored all these interdependencies from many different directions, from yeah. the direction of exploring culture and, and you know, yeah. blind spots and the way we see or don't see, what is, what, what's in the matrix that you can't see or right. working with information, what is information or working with um, questions around the mind, you know, yeah. what, what, what does a human being yeah. No. How do you yeah. know who yeah. are? How do you know who you are? Yeah. These kind of questions and yeah. ecology and how ecology was part ecology of ecology is huge. Yeah. And the sacred, even. Mm -hmm. right? And so it took a lot of courage to to hold all those things open mm -hmm. in the midst of being a scientist and being at least tangentially incorporated into the realm of academia, which is not known for its mm -hmm. wide yeah. uh, contextual thinking. Yeah. Um, so it, it was just so brave. And, and also the care. If you look at the, mm -hmm. the way that my dad phrases things mm -hmm. in his work, yeah, there's every sentence is like, each word is put there to keep away the possibility of ossifying and concretizing things that shouldn't be ossified and concretized. Oh. And it's like, it's like, it's concrete proof. There's things that are waterproof and mm -hmm. then there's things that are concrete proof. Yeah. And his work is concrete proof. Right. And it's, it's not that it doesn't yeah. land on the ground. It's very much yeah. in the ground. It's, it is the ground. Yeah. Yeah. But um, but I appreciate that all the time because, you know, it's difficult to write things without getting sucked into jargonizing that becomes about being practical or offering deliverables or defining or, you know, feeding into the exact system mm -hmm. that's actually negating mm. the, the vitality that is necessary. Theory. Yeah, totally. I just uh, it's, for me reading reading your dad. It, it was almost impossible to read your dad without having a perceptual shift. Mm -hmm. Like like there was this kind of quality of of. Uh, and I remember reading his um, ecology. I think it's ecology of mind book, which I've read about twenty times. Um, <laughs> this experience of to to there, there, there's a there's a way that he writes and he puts things that in you want to understand it to to really understand it you get done trying to understand what he's saying and you don't know if you quote quite understand it but then like you look at the tree and the sky and the relationship between the two right and then there's this experience of of uh multiple levels happening in the learning Mm. and learning him and i always got that sense that he was that he was teaching things at multiple levels of context such that he, yeah all at yeah, once yeah absolutely and that's the thing is that it's it's when you when there's a shift in the in the those multiple lo layers levels realms whatever they are mm -hmm. um of context mm -hmm. it changes everything so it's, it, you know, this like yeah. appetite to change, make change or produce change or to somehow generate change. Yeah. That, even that is actually, mm -hmm. it's kind of a, I don't want to say the wrong level, but it's at a level that is still mechanistically in, implied enough to generate and to start to lean into the same kind of thinking that got us into this mess. Mm -hmm. Yes. Right. Yes. And so yes. it's not really about change making. Mm -hmm. um, it's about every moment of your life being filled with another kind of integrity. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I think, yeah, yeah. yes, and the, and the integrity 
Now, when you say integrity, so I oftentimes when I hear people talk about integrity, right? There's this kind of, <laughs> this kind of, it's like <laughs> everything kind of clenches and there's a, a, a thing that kind of, I'm gonna be integrous. But when you say integrity, I get this sense of like an integrity, like a, a deepening. What, why do I get that sense? Like what, you, you mean something by integrity that, that is not evoking a response of that word that normally when people say it in me, what is that sense of integrity? Uh, well, it's not really about following the rules or yeah. following a script. Totally. Right. It's yeah, about yeah. actually recognizing that in response to any complex system, like your own identity, like yeah. your marriage or your, your partnership, like your relationship to your kids or your relationship to your, the world in any complex relationship. that there is, you know, what we were talking about before, this kind of attention. And that's a really rigorous attention. Yeah. It's not a lazy attention. Yeah. It's not an easy methodology. Mm. It's not a technique. It's not a five easy steps. It's mm. a look out for the blind spots. Use every sense you've got all the time. Go mm -hmm. in, go out, go up, go down, go around. Keep turning. Yeah. And in that, process so attend. Attend. Yeah. yeah yeah there's a um a, a way of of being in something in the way that it's integrating right so integrity has something to do with integrating yeah so the, being in the integrity with something in a way that's integrating this i keep noticing your your gesturing <laughs> is really is really uh evo evoking of what you're talking about this sense of integrity <laughs> right yeah, this it, kind of coming deepening and coming out is somehow the same movement or connected very very deeply it was a, a long time when i was working with sort of complexity and systems thinking stuff and mm -hmm. i would find that there were some people who were really good at it and some people who it just seemed to just remain elusive they could learn all the vocab and they could okay. know all the authors and they could be you know very versed in the theory but somehow the the thing just got out of there it just wouldn't land in their bones mm -hmm. and one of the things that i started to notice was that it was maybe a majority of the people for whom that sort of thinking was was feasible mm. were people who had kind of been through the dark night mm. they've been through something where they had to really go where they've never been before mm -hmm. yeah where everything counted and they had no idea who they were going to be or how they were going to get through it but they made it through mm -hmm. and mm. that requires mm. that a kind of attention yeah. being and this is one of those moments mm -hmm. at, a, at a giant scale at a personal at a mm -hmm. personal level this is one of those moments yeah yeah where we don't no one really knows mm -hmm. in, about what's going to happen in three weeks no one really knows where this is going or what changes have already happened what what what's already what's already gone from that thing we used to know as normal mm -hmm. yeah right so this is one of those moments where there there the thing is once you've been through that dark night you have a sense that if the dark night comes again that you might not know what to do but you will figure it out you will pay attention and you will, you know, go carefully mm -hmm. and you will figure it out. Yeah. And that's what I mean by integrity mm -hmm. is that that kind of attention that allows you to figure it out when there is no script and there's no, nobody knows and there's lives on the line 
and the relationships between generations, between futures, between uh-huh. life and death are there. And, you know, honestly, those things are there from breakfast till yes. bedtime all day, every day. You yes. know, the things you say to your children, yes. the things you say to your partner, the things you say to yourself. Yeah. Right? So it's yeah. as yeah. banal as lunchtime and it's as profound as global, mm-hmm. global mm-hmm. survival. Totally. Seems to me um, that what's happening now, I, I mean, it, it, the, first of all, like being an ant on an elephant, <laughs> right? Like, <laughs> I feel like I'm just, just finding out that it's not even an elephant that I didn't know I was on. You know, there's a sense of, there's a sense of right sizeness about, about how much I don't know. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, but there's a, when I think about what's happening, it, stri- it strikes me as, as this is kind of more revealing a crisis we've been in. And I really heard it when you said, you know, we're, that's, that's actually true, this quality of sensing. It's all, it's all here. It'll take all of our faculties to really, to be with, right? Um, and when you said, and actually it's all here every day in the way that you eat your cereal in your relationship with your kids. However, it seems, it seems to me that uh, there's, that the, cri- the crisis that this could be reveal, revealing seems like it's gonna expose, I mean, the most, you know, one of the most obvious places to look is like the financial system, right? Of just, it's, it's gonna expose to what degree we've been on a house of cards, <laughs> right? that like our systems that are taking from other systems and not accounting for them over stacked up for a long enough period of time where we have people in generations that have like, don't even perceive, right, what's underneath them. Um, and so this is really, I'm, my, my attention is awake too. <laughs> <laughs> like we really haven't gone through something like this. I heard somebody say, it's like, he thinks it's, it's been since like World War II that we've at a, at a very deep level have experienced a real shake where we've had to make some real decisions about some things. Um, and this seems to be a particular time uh, in, in, in my view, a particular time of a period of forgetfulness with the age of technology and screens and this kind of sense where there's a sensibility I've noticed with with the current generation, you know, you and I are like, I think the last generation that can have a memory before the internet, like we're the last ones, I think. Right. You maybe (laughs) know. And which is, which is a really interesting thing to think about. Right. Cause it does seem to me that there's a, you know, one of the things that I think probably one of the, most profound things I think I heard your dad say that I've been, I've thought about for a long time, which is, he says, you know, and I think he was, he was, one of his points was he, he was trying to articulate our attitude towards the earth, you know, and he's basically saying like, look, it's not that we're a bunch of bad people, right, that are, are doing bad things to the earth. He's like, no, it's, 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 it's that we don't see right. the, the complex of relations, the, the delicacy of those relations, of the deep integrity that makes up the earth. And because we can't see them, we can't relate to them. We break them. And what I liked about what he said about that is that it implies that, like, no, we act in relationship to what we can see, right? And because right. we can't see all of the networks right of 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 congruency that make up nature right we can't respond to them we can't act on them yeah i mean i don't think we're ever going to see all of them right so i 
I, I guess what I love about that statement is the generosity in it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, but I, I also just want to say that there's something about the humility. Yeah, that's it. Of, of recognizing, okay, there are things I can't see here. And it doesn't mean they're not there. That but, I, I hear yeah. in that just so even in, in just what you just said, I like there's a sensibility there I want to I want to circle around because I think it's really important that I get from you, right? Which is even right there you're like as I was talking about that you're like, no, it, it it's not it, it's not like first of all we're not never going to see all of them, right? But there's what I'm what I'm what I'm hearing in that is is basically this this somehow understanding our size <laughs> right <laughs> is seeing right like the relationship between humility and seeing uh i think is something that i hear you in a lot of your conversations and even in just that little moment there i see you responding to a lot right of like this connection between oh there's something about humility that allows me to see more clearly, right? And it, there's, there's something paradoxical about that too, because it's on one level you're saying, look, like you can barely even make up, you know, how, you can't even explain how you put, put your shoes on in the morning, <laughs> right? And all the relations around that. In fact, you'll never be able to see, to exhaust the mystery. However, I get this sense that you're, 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 you're sharing with me how to actually see and this connection with humility. I just, it just seems to me that that's, that's something I get from you when I, when, I hear, when I hear you a lot. And also, even in just what I would imagine some of your, your, um, your pet peeves <laughs> with some of the conversations. Yeah, I think... That's absolutely true. And there's another piece to that that is um, confusing. Mm -hmm. And it's a confusion that comes from this kind of mm. the tension mm. between the fact that everything you do is an action, even the things you don't do. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Um, and mm. the way in which those actions are um, are are brought into the world through you, whatever that means. I don't even really know how to put that, but somehow we do stuff. Like whatever that stuff is, we do. Does it come from culture? Does it come from mm -hmm. like where? I don't know. Yeah. Where is that whole mess that that? somehow brought us together. It's kind of reminds me of that Slumdog Millionaire movie, you know, that like, how did we get here? Oh, wow. There's a lot of stories there. Yes, <laughs> yes. Um, a lot of stochastic process. Mm -hmm. So, but the thing is that, that with, with so little at our actual fingertips that are, is actually ours to know, it becomes really tricky to deal with this idea of being purposive. Yeah. And, and purposiveness mm -hmm. is something that is held in great esteem. You have to have purpose and you have to have intent and there's a hole there. Yeah. And my father talked about this and it's one of the more difficult pieces mm -hmm. of his around conscious purpose. And, uh, how do you know you know what's the right thing to do when if you look at what you know you know that you don't know very much mm -hmm. yes so you know being that that drive to be purposive is always going to be at the very least mm. ill-informed um, the conviction with which purposive industriousness, intent, 
-hmm. you know, this kind of cast a vision, manifest it. Mm -hmm. Um, there's 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 something inherently non complex yeah. about that yeah right yeah. so but but i want to be very clear that what i am not saying is that inaction is the way to go because there's no such thing as inaction even inaction yeah. is inaction yeah right that person you don't yeah. stick up for that thing you didn't say that moment you didn't say i love you that you know, that all of those things have just as many consequences as taking actions. Oh. Uh -huh. But what are the ways in which you, we might tread more carefully yeah. Yeah. Um, into those actions more, more humbly with uh -huh. a, a larger uh, um, set of, senses that are on and on alert oh. so that hmm. we'd be a little careful about thinking well i know how it's going to work out yeah. and what we want to do is we want to do this 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 and this and it's it's one thing in the hmm. the the habit of looking backwards and finding linear causality as you look to the past but right now, I think it's really important in this moment to be so careful uh, about applying that linear causality to the future. Yeah. There's a lot of people talking about, you know, where are we going to go from here and what's happening after the pandemic and what will the world be like and how can we yeah. um, enact the change, create the changes that we need to create. And, yeah. and there it is again. It's like, look, please yeah. don't that question yeah there's a strike me as, as you as you um again i just want to comment as i'm listening to you as i listen to you i'm hearing more of the birds right there's a widening of my attention right of behind me and in front of me so i just appreciate i appreciate listening to the music you're singing or that's singing <laughs> <laughs> or that you you, you yeah. know don't know that you're singing but i i really felt the sense of a a concealed a really kind of a, almost like a concealed arrogance in an in an urgency right that seems to bank on it's up to us to figure something out and i never quite got it at i never quite heard it so clearly as i was listening to you of this sense of like Oh yeah, like as if I'm an actor, independent mm -hmm. of all this, and I come upon it, and then I need to figure it out, as if what I'm inside of isn't so <laughs> isn't so mysterious. Um, yeah, that sense, the sense of that that kind of strange urgency that I often hear with people about. It's almost got a moralistic sense to it, mm -hmm. that sense of purposefulness, right? Which is, it looks like on some level that your attention's out on the environment, but it seems to presuppose a very, very, a very, like a certain, a very uh, certain set of metaphysics about who I am and what I could know. <laughs> and, and those, that set yeah. is the set that generates the system yeah. that is exactly broken yeah. or fragile or fraught or corrupt or whatever you want to call it. Mm -hmm. It's mechanistic. It's destructive. It's exploitative. It's right. Mm -hmm. But all the, the, mm -hmm. the, the issue here I think is about how, how there is learning. And mutual learning. Yeah. Um, and so much of what was in the, just the, the basis of the way the world, societies, economics, mm. jobs, professions, egos, identities, status, um, mm. roles, genders, right? All of these, all of this business of having, having a degree and getting ahead and 
mm. doing the right thing and being somebody and mm. that there's been an underlying theme to that, mm. which was that, you know, sometimes you just have to step over the next guy. Mm. You just got to do what you got to do to get to the, to get what you got to get. To realize your purpose. <laughs> yeah. And, and nice guys come in last. Mm -hmm. right. And so what is, I want to point to in that is that there is um, a deep violence mm -hmm. and it's not just a violence to the next guy that mm -hmm. you stepped over. It's not, it's a violence to the idea of what it means to be in an interrelational interdependent vitality. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. So this idea that, well, in that case, it's okay to hurt somebody. Mm -hmm. In this case, it's all right. You just had to go ahead. There was nothing you could do. You just, you know, some, there's winners and there's losers. So we have all this, this deep cultural sense making that is competitive, that is, um, it's got an appetite mm. that is devourous of vital relationships. And what, what I see right now is, is that the most important thing we can do is tend to those vital relationships. Tend, yeah. Tend to them. Tend. And that's a whole different thing. It's, yeah. it's not yeah. about remapping the world. It's about, it's about the fact that every relationship you are in with your body, with the, your garden, with your dog, with yeah. your wife, yes. with your husband, with your, mm -hmm. with your, with your identity has to be tended mm -hmm. in a different way. And, and so this, this violence is not just in one direction. It has been in all directions. It was in the, it was just a violence to, to the relationality. Yeah. And so right now, what I really see is that, if there's any hope that there's different ways of living, yeah. those different ways of living start by having different relationships. Yeah. Tending relationship ways. That's what I'm really hearing. Yeah. So I, that's, yeah. And that's, so that's where, yeah. that's where I think it's really, hmm. it's possible to be finding in entirely new, buckets of possibility mm -hmm. they're just waiting there in the relationships that haven't actually been given room to go in different directions mm -hmm. yeah i really i think the thing that i really heard and felt when you were talking was um when you talked about tending to the relationships right and that they're right here <laughs> like we're wherever you look, whatever you perceive is it already, you already find yourself in a relationship. There's a relationship with you and I, and there's a relationship to my body, to the chair, to the sense of the, the, the ceiling, to my wife sleeping outside and the way that she's sleeping on the couch. And in order to allow me to have this time with you, there's so much, uh, it, it's interesting because it's uh There's a reverence, there's a reverence that seems inherent in when I feel into that. I, I, I think that's the right word. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's, it's definitely about reverence and, and, and relevance, right? Reverence and relevance. John, John will love that one. <laughs> John Rickle, I love that one. I can just hear him coming out of his seat right now. <laughs> John Verbeke. Yeah, I mean, the thing is, is that if you look at any, any ecological process, the relationships are in the continuing shifting process of being relevant to each other in multiple ways. And so... I think so, you know, the reason that it makes sense um, 
to to tend to these relationships is because if we don't, we're not relevant anymore. Yeah. Right? Yeah. That's called extinction. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So right? so so, so that's, if, a, that's yes. a like big problem. <laughs> right. Or maybe not. I don't know. Interesting. But, Very interesting. But not being relevant is an issue. Yeah. And where the relevance, I'm really, it's interesting, relationship relevance. Like they're kind of, like, just kind of getting the sense of the, like, what is it, what is it to be human? It's to be, to find relevance in relation. It, it, I think one of the things I've noticed, and, and I wanted to talk with you a little bit about your, like the work that you do, because I know uh, in your conversation with John, you talked about you, know, you used to teach complex systems, right? Mm -hmm. um, and, and now you're doing something else. It sounds very exper experiential. Uh, and that's where a lot of my work has come from too, is, is this dive into relationships, right? Basically, right. right? And one of the things that I, I find striking about intimacy, right? is I think people think about it, right? Like I often hear people talk about connecting, right? Mm -hmm. And it's got this sense of there's me, there's you, right? And that we were gonna go through this thing and then we'll connect somehow, right? But, but if I look at the experience of intimacy, it's always this sense of like, oh, there you are. But there's a sense of uh, that which was already the case came from the background to the foreground. There's this, this experience of like, oh, that's right. Like, even if I've never met you before, like in within two seconds, if we dropped into intimacy, there's this quality of, oh yeah, there you are. <laughs> mm -hmm. There you I am. And there's this quality of as if it were already there and it just, the relation revealed itself, right? Mm -hmm. It wasn't so much constructed or built in that sense of the word. And so that to me has been getting into relationship with that, with that relationship has uh, following that intelligibility, just paying attention to that, as we were talking in the beginning, had me end up in the whole universe. <laughs> right. You know, somehow just like connecting to this basic I thou, realizing that the hyphen that connects the two was primary reality going whoa and then that just connects to everything else right mm -hmm. and i'm really feeling this in this conversation with you like there's an intimacy that you're um evoking and revealing that's just having me just in relationship more with my world like the birds <laughs> i hear your birds I too yeah you hear them too Good. yeah i hear them they're nice birds <laughs> they're, they're liking us yeah. yes yes <laughs> well, I, I, there's been so much damage. Mm -hmm. And I, I think one of the things that worries me sometimes mm -hmm. is just, it seems to be some kind of backwards evolutionary notion that, you know, when people are hurt, they hurt other people. And the more people they hurt, the more those other people end up hurting other people. Mm. Like, how are we ever going to get anywhere when people keep hurting each other and hurting mm -hmm. the, the, the world around them? Yeah. And yeah. so I guess one of the, the sort of the, the things about this is that there's something healing there. Mm -hmm. And it's, I don't want to make light of that. Okay. I want to be very clear that I don't consider this to be some, um, you know, kind of surface clearing, varnishing over, uh, because, uh, because we're sitting in comfortable living rooms, you and I, 
And those comfortable living rooms have been po made possible, produced through um, decades, if not centuries, of exploitation. Right. So these these comforts that we can reside in. Right. I mean, how would it feel to walk into a house that was filled with, you know, elephant feet umbrella holders and, um, mm -hmm. you know, stuff the, where our ability to perceive the violence has already been awakened. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So the ability to perceive the violence of my whatever sofa that was produced in some series of yucky factories. Um, there's been a, a, some damage in that numbness that has kept me from being able to perceive that. Because if I could really perceive the violence that has produced my life, I would just fall on the floor. Right. And so that where I'm going with this is that there's um, there's a reveal right now it, for those who are willing to have the reveal be revealed. The emperor has no clothes and never did. Um, and it is a, a, a moment when it is possible to perceive the interdependencies in which those violences have been wrought, right? Because they also exist in a, in a, in a field of relationships mm -hmm. that have been whirling and we've been caught in them. And when I say we, I mean you and me. Mm -hmm. I yeah. mean, there's a lot of people for whom that set of cogs and that whirl just chewed them up and spat them out. Right. And they've been on the outside for generations. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So yeah. there's, there's something about the, the ability to perceive this reveal, to be in this reveal, to be in relationship through this reveal and to pay attention that we don't go back. But that means that, that I'm not trying to leverage up on you. I'm not stealing your ideas. I'm not, you know, harvesting you. I'm not thinking about the marketing of you. I'm not, you know, there's like all this stuff that came with old system yeah. world yeah. that yeah. didn't attend to the relationships. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. And some ways in which it's been, completely okay to just be numb yeah. it wasn't just okay the numbest people were the ones who could win yeah yeah right right so this sensitizing is um, mm. um it comes at a really high price and i think that's what i was saying about my dad you know yeah. to to actually stay there and write those words and never capitulate oh. was um it was an act of oh. immeasurable love courage. and yeah. courage yeah right and that's yeah. that thing of tending those relationships and that's what it takes rigor and courage and love and oh. attention oh. 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 i sense in the when you talk about the pain, a couple of things is like, I, the moment you said it, I, I just was like, oh yeah, if I could feel the ache and the strain and the scream of the multiple levels of relations that come into this desk that I'm, yeah, I don't know if I could sit here, <laughs> right? Is it still beautiful? Yes. Right. Still beautiful, but somehow it's, It's, but it's, it's more something. Yeah, I, I just, I wonder, you know, how long before luxury becomes a testament 
to um, a way of living that was deeply misguided. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I sense, I sense when you're talking about that, because I know, you know, with, with scheduling with you, you were traveling a lot. So it was like, it took a while to, for us to sync up. But, but a lot of the places I heard that you were traveling were in, like, in crisis, where crises were happening. Like, it sounds like you're, you're talking to people. I think you were talking to some people in Nicar- Nicaragua yesterday. Like, mm-hmm. it sounds like that you're in contact, you're a point, right, where a lot of, I would imagine you're seeing pain, right? That a lot of people don't have the opportunity to to be witness of. Yeah, and that's a weird privilege, but um, yeah. but it is because yeah. uh, it's very easy to go to sleep. Yeah, and and just not be paying attention to yeah. you know I, it. It's easy. Yeah. To have that be over there somewhere. Yeah. And. Yeah. Uh, and what's your experience as you open that door, that door is open for you and you step into it and you're actually not with people who are advantaged. You're not with people who have the luxury of forgetting or having it being over there. Like what, well, is, what is that like for you? I, I mean, I just have to tell you that the, the first thing that I can say about it is that if you've been betrayed by the system, it's a lot easier to see the system. Yeah, yeah. So I have a much harder time actually talking about, you know, how these kind of interrelational transcontextual processes work with people who have benefited and and it's much more difficult to to talk about how linearity isn't actually productive when people's very lives have been a linear program that they enacted that was productive yeah. how do you convince someone that that linear purposive process was actually bullshit right. when they're living in the product of it yeah. it's very real it's right here yeah Right. And it's like, well, actually, it's that's not that's not what it was. It was that you were already you were already in process with a whole lot of relational things that carried you along and produced you through multiple contexts into the life that you're in. And you just showed up and did did what you had to do to do it because you yeah. were in it. Yeah. It's the matrix you were in. Yeah. And there's a lot of people for whom no matter how many good grades they get, no matter how honest they are, no matter how kind and, and ambitious and all of those things they go on to try to be, the system just chews them up and spits them out. Yeah. yeah. Right. So yeah. It, it looked linear to you, maybe, or it looked mm-hmm. linear. It felt linear. Mm-hmm but it wasn't right right and so that's very difficult to convey Mm. but when you're working with people who who know the other side of it what it means to be systemically excluded Mm. now there's an education and systems Mm -hmm. yeah yeah there it is yeah the likes of which frankly you and i will never know right and when you have a conversation with them what's that conversation like like what do you find yourself saying what do you find yourself how do you find yourself responding to that and what are they saying and where are their concerns i don't know i feel like this is a really weird window we're in here (laughs) yeah. <laughs> because yeah. I, I'm feeling really uncomfortable about like the they, yeah. right? But yeah. um yeah. but yeah. I also um because I think what I'm at well it's just supposed to say it's like the thing what has me ask that question, right? Mm-hmm. Is the 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 sense of in the way that you've talked about it, it just something broke through for me. 
mm. right? I feel, I'm, and I, I can sense that you're in contact with a different set of relations with people that are going through things that I'm sure I don't even have a clue to comprehend. And so I, I feel that wisdom. I also feel the wrestling going on inside of you and you coming to, coming to terms with it, like literally as we're talking about it. So there's a, I'm in, I feel like I'm in response in a, in a evoked, you know. I mean, I don't know. It's just, I just feel like it's just, it's just what you do. It's just the day you just, you show up and you just Mm -hmm. show up. Right. I mean, what the hell are we going to do? Like we're, we're, yeah. We're born into this moment. Yeah. And we're here. Yeah. Okay. And the thing is coming unraveled. Yeah. And uh, I don't know what to do with it. I don't. Yeah. I don't know what not to do with it. Yeah. Right. All I know is that there are a, a, most people alive on this planet have been. traumatized and Mm -hmm. violated again and again Mm -hmm. in the very ways for the very same things that have produced benefits Mm. for me Mm -hmm. at material levels. But that does not mean that at some other level that there isn't another whole set of weird blockages and and blind spots and encasings of epistemological just fuck ups mm-hmm. right and mm-hmm. so how do i how do i how do i how, how do we hold this like at some point it's just like well look i have no idea but i'm here yeah cuz you you're in you're 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 relating <laughs> I don't know what to do. Responding to the set of relationships that you find yourself in. But I'm willing to try and I'm I'm willing to just recognize that I have no idea. And and also that it's time to shut up and listen. You know, that's a big one too, of just there is so much communication patterning that has to do with perpetuating existing processes of seeing and and believing and these frames of epistemology that we're in and i just don't think that it's possible to uh talk ourselves out of it i think it's gonna come from being lost that feeling of being lost, of of listening at the level of, I don't know what this means. It's like hearing words you've never heard before. And you try to figure out what, what, what they mean. And you're not going to be able to do it. Yeah. But yeah. that's what I see, is that there's a, a need to... Um... Mm. I'll tell you what the opposite yeah. of it is, really, is ambition. That's really the opposite of everything we've talked about today. Ambition. The opposite is ambition. Yeah. Yeah. And so that's the thing that's just like this. Hmm. Yeah. I don't know. Right. I don't know right. what to say about it. I just, I just feel it. I just yeah. feel like. You've said so much in that to me. To me. Like I think your response and, your, and, now, and actually your. I don't know, like just that sense was so wise or it showed so much wisdom for me. Just a sense of so much was communicated in just that response of Yeah, it's funny because it's it's interesting. I haven't thought about this in in a long time, but what I flashed to actually was what watching your response to my question about this, like I flashed to a moment actually when, when I told uh, my son that I was, that me and his mom were getting a divorce. Mm. Like, 
there was, I just remember this, this particular, like this, this day. And it was like, you know, it was pretty conscious. I mean, we were both pretty awake about it and it was time to let him know. And there was a moment where we said something and he didn't quite get it. And then he went outside and then he comes back and he just falls apart. Right. And I could feel, I remember this, this, this sense of like, there was so much in me <laughs> that wanted to like make it better or turn away from it or justify something. But there was something, there was another voice into me, like in that, 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 that happened, which I'm, I'm hearing, I think, in what you're saying, or at least it's evoking this memory for me of where I was like, I know, like, let it kill you, like turn towards this, like all of it, right? And I just felt myself kind of like resist that first layer and just was like, all right. And I just got naked and I just was with him and cried with him and we cried and held him and were with him and and I was just like the mantra that I kept hearing in my being was just let it like just let it kill you like let it mm-hmm. all the way in look at it directly in the eye like all of my guilt all of the regret all of his pain all of the consequences of that like this is reality like really look at it really face it. That's what I'm hearing. In so much as you can. I mean, that's the thing is that, again, it's that humility. You're never going to be able to yeah, face yeah, all yeah. of it. Yeah. Right? You can't yeah. even see it. Yeah. And that's, that's yeah. that piece yeah. of like, you know, like, you know, when your heart is broken and you have that one friend who's like, I know how you feel. And you're like, no, you don't. No. Mm-mm. You don't know how I feel. Mm-mm. Nope. And they're like, let me just help you. And it's like, no, just back off. Yeah. You, you don't know who I am. You don't know who I feel. You don't know what's happening here. Yeah, I know you yeah. want to do good, but can you please just go away? <laughs> <laughs> that thing. Yes. Okay. Yes, it's yes. that thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, you know, they start in with this psycho babble self help memes, and you just want to smack them. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. There is that, there is that, that thing again. I just appreciate that. Like, <laughs> it's, yeah, as much as you can perceive, but like, you don't even know. Like just yeah. that, that I just keep, I keep hearing that from you. And I'm, I'm, uh, the, the humility and the reverence of that, right. Um, and the, rem- and the wisdom of that is just, I feel the, I feel that deep in you and I'm, I'm, uh, I feel myself in response to it. Thank you. Well, that's good. I think a lot of people think it's just kind of a pain, but. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's what has me think it's more, that's what has me think it's more wise. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. We, I mean, we just, mm-hmm. I think it's a, a, it's a moment to just get ready to not know anything. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, you know, everything that I know about who I am and right. it's all generated through relationships to a whole set of cultural processes that could easily just be gone. And in fact, the world would be better if they were. So that's, a you know, if all the structures that have propped you up and shaped you and formed you and given you the structure to to become who you are mm. are mm. gone yeah who are you yeah it's so interesting because i my experience with as as in my experience with working with people right especially um i've worked i've done a lot a lot of different formats you know i teach courses and but i've also done um do one-on-one work where I'll basically live with somebody for seven days, right? We'll just wow have, and we'll just dive in. Um, or I'll like, I'll work with a family and I'll go move in for a couple weeks. Right. And then just embed myself in the system and then respond. Right. Um, I've learned a lot. Of, I've learned a lot. I've learned, I've, I've learned how much I don't know. <laughs> 
<laughs> <Right? Yeah. laughs> That's deep. Yeah, definitely. But it, it reminds me of this thing of, of where in the beginning, what I started doing is, is it was, and, I, and I found this, I discovered this actually kind of on accident, but then it became, it, it became so poignant and so consistent or it just kind of became part of the process, right? Which is most of, most of the things that I do now, like is a function of that, of the experience of doing it that I could have never even have even thought to not know about, right? Until it happened. Mm-hmm. But what we'll do is we'll we'll start, right? And they usually come with like a lot of ambition, right? Yeah. And there's a reason they're there and there's a purpose and there's something at stake. And so we'll sit down and I'll like have a I'll I'll get those, you know, those post those big post-it, you know, paper things that you write yeah. and they'll go, okay, so so why are you here? And they'll write it down. Okay, why else are you here? Okay, what else? What else? What else? What else? And we'll usually fill up three or four sheets of that. And then I'll take it and I'll just put it up on the corner. And then seven days later, after having gone through this whole ride, right, <laughs> I'll, take, I'll, take the, I'll take it out and we'll put it up and we'll look at it. And it's every single time, right? This, it's, it's a very common response where they'll look at it and they'll realize that what they're looking at wasn't even relevant, right? Like right. It, was, it was what they wanted was so, in a certain sense, they could see was part of the blind spots of the system that created that. In fact, if they got that thing or even the way that right. they formulated, right? And then we started, we got into this relationship and things opened up and we started responding. And it's usually some version of this. It's like they had no idea that they were sitting on a house of cards. They had no idea, right? And they start to realize like a a sense of betrayal, like finding out their parents were insane and they had no idea, (laughs) right? Like whatever it is that they find out and then, but looking at it and being in relationship with it and the deepening process that happens through that such that they looked at what they used to want, right? And you see, and one of the things I've learned about this is this wedded relationship with what I want and what I, how the world, how I constitute the world as the figure that it is for me is, is so intimate in the way I'm paying attention. And that the, yeah. And I can only, that's what I'm saying. And when yeah, you when you start to shift that stuff, everything changes. Yeah. Yes, everything yes. changes. Right. Right. Yes. And so it's no point trying to sort out how what actions you have to take to solve a problem when you haven't shifted the perspective through which you're seeing the problem. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. So, and in order to see the perspective, like in order to change your perspective. It's interesting. Even that, it's about getting into just relationship that you have one, right? That in itself is bringing a perspective, right? And it's not even getting a new perspective. It's just like seeing what you've been seeing with. Mm -hmm. It's this, there's something that just happens with it, I'm noticing. It's like has a, yeah, it creates different worlds. Yeah. But this has been so fun, Guy. It's been so fun. So thank you so much. Thank you. Nice I to meet you. I've been looking, been really looking forward to talking with you. And I, well, I it was a really so nice, much. nice adventure. Mm-hmm. And thanks for being the, uh, the unique being that you are and the warmth that you bring and the humanity and perspective that you bring to these conversations. It's a real, it's a real unique, strong voice. Mm, so thank, thank you. you so much for that. Thank you so much. And thank you for putting it together. And yes. let's do it again. Let's do it again. See how it, see, see where we are in a couple of months from now. Absolutely. What world will we be in then? Absolutely. Bye-bye. All right. Take care. <laughs>